Welcome to this week's Spin Foil Theory. We're about to take a dive into the lore of Destiny the game. Specifically, we'll be giving a high level scrutiny to popular, emerging, and outlying theories than judging them. With that out of the way, let's put on our Spin Foil hats and get a little crazy. Here comes this week's show. And we're recording. Not recording on this and... very special goodbye episode of the Spin Foil Theory podcast. Wah. Unfortunately, yes. I know, I know. It's uh it's been fun though. Like we've done we've put out, you know, like 100 115 yeah. episodes, yeah. Like main mainline episodes. Main episodes. Think, we also have the special episodes too, which I think got to like 16. 16. Yeah, this will be like 17 or 18. I um, think. I might be wrong. Don't trust me on this. I'm bad at math. Let me look at it. Let me just look at it so when people like listen to this later they don't just like, "You guys, you are gooses." We are gooses. We might be gooses. Oh, uh, let me see here. We got two. Yeah, this will be 18, I think. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I was right. You were. I think. And uh-huh. I am now the goose. You are a goose. <laughs> yeah. Let's get a goose hat. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the worst fates. Bungie, please uh, add a goose helmet in game and I will wear it. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, this is a this is a special episode, and you know, all good things come to an end, guys. Uh, we, yeah, you know, like like we said last time, it's all for good reasons, and uh, we we really thank you for uh, for being here. So what we thought we'd do today is just kind of you know we reached out um, to the community, uh, asked for some favorite moments, and uh, you know Lucy and I'll talk about some favorite moments uh, from the show, and uh, yeah, so. That's that's what we're in for today. There's there's probably there will probably be random spin foil Tangents. mixed in. Yeah. And that's and that's totally fine. I, I just can't prepare you for what that'll be ahead of time. So, so hopefully we talk about something you like. <laughs> um please please know. Please know that uh that we're we're uh I'm sure the notes will have a much better subject matter than I do before before uh before editing so yeah yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun um i've really enjoyed uh you know before before getting into specifics i i just really enjoyed from the beginning the destiny community's sort of uh lean and proclivity for spin foil for uh kind of like guessing at uh you know what's going on in the world of the story and what's happening in the background because you know especially back in d1 like that's that's how you got the story like you got you got little tastes during the game and then you had to go and do your grimoire cards and you had to like hunt around for stuff in the open world or like complete tasks like what have you and that's how you got the story or maybe like little pieces in the armors before they had lore tabs yeah you would get like you would read like the flavor text on like the raid armor, and then you'd get like this story of like Kabir's fire team or. Hmm. Gosh, yeah. Because that's so funny. Um, and we would we would like attribute a little past to that too, because like you remember Kabir's path. Mm, yeah. You can still take it. Like now, there's a point in taking it. it um, but like back in D one, like uh. That area where you go down to, I think it's a secret chest down there now? I think so, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you would just, like, someone discovered that you could go that way, and that was just like, yeah, you can go that way. <laughs> That's just, just it. <laughs> so, oh, we really, we really appreciate it, because I think we had figured out in the raid that by that point, uh, Kabir would have been separated by everybody, from everybody. Um, and, and just doing it by his lonesome as he, as he plundered and dove like down deeper and deeper. Um, and that was one of my, you know, that was, that was one of my favorite introductions into how deep the lore could get, because that was like, that was that in conjunction with the black garden, that was like one of the first places where you see in the story that like a guardian could be completely cut off to the point they like yeah. actually start to die. Uh, j- just from like existing, just from like withering away uh, exposure. Yeah. Exposure to the darkness. It's a good way to look at it. 
Um, so yeah, that was, that was definitely, I think where things kicked off. I think I had a fascination. I definitely had, um, a bit of, uh, you know, love with the mechanics and stuff leading up to that part of the, of the story. But it was, yeah, it was actually getting in there, starting to get into like these bits of story. You don't really understand what's going on and taking, taking the dive into, into that, uh, that sort of, uh, arena, I guess maybe, but, uh, that, uh, that, that more expanded view of the, of the destiny universe, I guess is a better way to put it. But yeah, I know, Lucy, I know, I know you, um, what, what did you think? Like, because uh, I know for a lot of people, I think yourself was was included in this, if I recall correctly. A lot of people like that was not their first raid. Mm, I mean, I did do Vogue when it first came out. I vaguely, okay. that was my first raid. Oh, I uh, misremembered. I'm sorry. Nah, it's okay. I just don't. I don't remember my first time doing it. All I remember from my first time doing Vogue is I remember being at Atheon, and I was a hunter. And everyone else was warlocks and titans, and they had, like, the fusion <laughs> nades. Or, like, the solar nade. No, warlocks had the solar nade that could push Atheon off. And they're like, oh, you're a hunter. You're useless. Go sit in the corner. That's all I remember. I remember just, like, huddling in the corner, being yep. like, what, what What? am I supposed to do here? I don't think we actually beat it. I don't remember. All I remember yeah. is being told, go sit in the corner, you're hunter. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Guess I'm yeah. just going to be over here. <laughs> yeah. I think for me... I like Crota's Raid the best, because that one I actually, like, I did with my friends in high school, and that was really fun, because I remember, because uh, one of my friends, their uh, older brother also played Destiny, and their older brother uh, did the raid, uh, like, I remember, like, meeting up with my friends groups in between class, we were all talking, we're like, oh, I heard the raid's like this, or the raid's like that, and we're all like, there's like, oh, how's this, how are we gonna beat it, and it was, it was fun, like, that's why I liked the Crota raid, because it's like, it's good, it was good times. Uh, King's Fall, uh, King's Fall is an interesting, interesting story, uh, I have only beat, only beat King's Fall in D1, like, three times. That's it. Once right. to get, Yeah. Once to get the gun, once mm-hmm. on, or like, once on hard mode for like the, well, normal and hard mode, and then once for, for, touch, for the Touch of Malice quest. That's mm. it. Because my issue is I didn't really get in, I don't, okay, let me explain. <laughs> I was in high school. Mm-hmm. I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. Going on LFG <laughs> as a gamer girl is... Ooh, yeah. Scary, especially as a high school. Oh God, no! So like, I didn't really raid that much, and King's Fall is very mechanic heavy. So yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really do King's Fall that much. So for for me, when King's Fall came back to D two, I'm like, finally, I can actually understand what's going on. Cause like, when and I did it in D one, I was very much like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what the hell's going on. What's happening? I'm lost. Lost in the a, sauce. Oh no! Well, man, it has no sauce. It's lost, though. Don't forget that part. But, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that reminds me of uh, my partner Kari's experience uh, that she told me about. Like, I think she played um, a bit of like the like I think there was a Lord of the Rings game that was that was an MMO. But uh, like that and it's like WoW or like League or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But oh, League! Oh, good God! Good God! But, League well, is she terrible. Would only, she would only play. Like she would basically like play up into the point where like you need to start being able to talk to people, mm-hmm. and then she would just start over because she didn't want to talk to people from like experiences and 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 stuff like that for like those same reasons you were just talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's oofed. So glad to have found a space <laughs> for for her and you. Like that's yes, oof, that sounds awful. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Video games can have some pretty nasty oh. people in it. But yeah, I have, I, have, I, have, I have my friends now, and we, we do King's Fall and all the raids. That's great. It's great. Like, I love how um, from D1 to D2, the raid and space has kind of changed, almost. Like, mm-hmm. it's very... Oh, no, I feel like it's a bit more... It's definitely different than D1. 
But I think it's different, like, better. Because now we have, we have so many raids. We have, you know, Last Wish. We have Garden. We have King's Fall. We have Vog. We have Vow. That's all of them, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many there are in there. I think uh, I feel like I keep, I keep wanting to say like Scourge, but Scourge and Leviathan raids aren't there. Yeah, I want Scourge I mean. to come like back. The, yeah, I want Scourge the, to come back. That's like my favorite raid. I was like, Bungie, please bring it back. Well, what I, I really wanted. liked about that too is it had a space where you could do like a, uh, like a like a five hundred like an oval style like Sparrow racing. Oh yeah, yeah, the very beginning, right? Yeah. Mm. So that was fun too. That was fun from like a Sparrow racing standpoint. And then obviously you just want spare racing track. to come back. You just want spare racing to come back. I'm a simple guy. I just <laughs> I, I like to go fast and I like to pilot. Machinery. You like go zoom. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I like to I like to make things go and fast is also a great mode yeah. of going. <laughs> I don't know. The reason why for me scourge is one of my favorite raids. It's technically a raid layer, technically because it's a shorter raid and. I don't know. I think. Oh yeah, I forgot Deepstone Crypt. Good God, how could I? Bruh, mm. bruh, that bruh. Whole, that whole release, the whole expansion built around that. Right Beyond now. Light. What? I forgot. I forgot Beyond Light was a thing, man. My brain scrambled. Yeah, Aramis is new to this season, right? Yeah, I don't know. Who's Aramis? What? <laughs> yeah. No, I totally forgot about uh, Deepstone Crypt because I was trying to think of like, oh, it's an easy raid, like Deepstone. Like, oh yeah, I forgot to mention Deepstone. I'm I'm cringe. But I digress. <laughs> uh, the reason why I liked Scourge of the Past was because it's a very uh, it's a very easy raid, very easy. I I liked what I did is I used that raid. I now use Deepstone as like the same kind of thing. Is I used I used Scourge as like to take my clan members or friends who were like new to Destiny but wanted to do raids. I was like, all right, this is like baby's first raid. Mm -hmm. It's not like super mechanic heavy like. Last Wish or Garden. Those are much more mechanic heavy. Mm -hmm. Versus like Deep Stone and Scourge. Some of the Leviathan raids aren't that mechanic heavy either if we're just doing all of the raids. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but um, I, it, yeah. I, I agree. I agree with the, uh, with the baby's first raid thing. I'm sorry, you were saying? No, no, no. Basically, I just, I just really like, also like the aesthetic of the Black Army weapons. Bungie, mm. please, just bring them back. Craftable weapons, hello? Like, black armor weapons are literally forged weapons. Like, mm hmm. Huh? <laughs> I don't know, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter or Reddit be like, Bungie, why? Why don't do this? No, I just think it's, fu I just think it's please, funny. I'm like, please give. same. <laughs> please. Please. I want. Exactly, if you think about it, the, you know, like, the resonance thing you could apply to the weapons? Mm-hmm. Aren't those technically like mementos? If you think about it, because you're using uh, some a thing and you're applying it to the weapon, and then it changes how it looks. I don't know. I kind of look at like uh, I think they're I, I kind of same spirit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think they're definitely in the same spirit. If they're not like technically the same, similar. Yeah. yeah, I just think I just wish we had more mementos. Like, think about getting one from like doing Master Vow or. Master King's Fall, you get like a Taken. Because if you level up the weapon enough, you get a shader. Saying like a Taken looking shader on all. Like, dude, like people would be like, okay, I'm doing Master a bajillion times now. Like, I think it'd be cool know. if it went back to, uh, if they did something like that for specific activities. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Like, um, Dungeons a, has. Yeah, like you got it from this dungeon. Yeah. The duality memento. Oh, Dumout would probably make it all like, you know, like the red nightmare. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then Imagine. Grasp could probably... Grasp is kind of hard, though, because it's like all... I guess Thorn, make it all like almost like a Thorn green. Because like, the um, armor's Thorn. It's all about... Yeah, I think that could work. I think that could work if everything has that sort of like pointy aesthetic. That, uh, I don't know, it looks like... it. Lo like, I, I don't know enough about how it... I don't think it exists like this in nature, but it, it looks like some weird... Um, uh, what's that stuff? It's uh, oh, obsidian. It just reminds mm. me of like really jagged obsidian in every direction. Yeah. Um, like maybe it was like just formed or something like that. But like yes, and also it will cut you. <laughs> yes, it's ouchy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that's uh that's one for me. Um, you know, I really I think if I review all the raids <coughs> myself, uh like my, my experience, I think I think for me the uh the one that really stood out as like the f- I guess like it wasn't my first one, but the first one that like I kind of did first week or like day one attempt with everyone was Crota. Like same you know, same same thing. Um and yeah, that before people figured out how to cheese it, that was also especially after the experience that we talked about in um in the Vault of Glass for Hunters. That was like the first time hunters were like kind of important, especially for the first part, because we could invis. Yeah, hunters could invis for sure, for sure. And we would uh yeah, we would be able to make it through. But I, I really liked like if and when they bring back uh crota's end or the dark blow i guess um i really really want that first part of the raid to be like half to done like i think you were meant to supposed to do it and that's like you're running in pack tactics you're getting to each lamp like making sure like you know you're watching each other's back as best you can like try to try to kill like wave after wave of these thrall that are gonna come destroy you and every now and again a night if i recall correctly um but yeah, and then when someone dies, you got to be like, if you're not right there, right when they die, you got to be like, yeah. leave them, like leave but them. But no, no, here's the thing now with the new, think of, I mean, taking just that first encounter and popping it into D2, remember the res timer? There's a timer now. If you don't yeah. res them in X amount of time, everyone dies. Mm. So I don't know. That is true. I guess it would depend on how they, how they, uh present that part the mechanics of that part because you know sometimes you can die and then like res yourself mm, it's yeah. like a less serious death uh, it's usually for like in between encounters in raids but uh maybe maybe it'll come as something kind of like that this is a uh, a survival puzzle you have to you have to you have to figure out how to not die as you go through the darkness, um, yeah, I would, I would, I gotta be honest, I would, I would, I would, I would rock it. I would, I would love it. I would love it. That would be so cool. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe it needs to be expanded a little bit. Maybe you work in something from uh, other expansions that had to do with Crota. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of the things like, uh, like we got in. Um, gosh, what was the skull last one? Prison of Elders. Prison of Elders, yeah. Uh, that was the name of that expansion? Yeah. I think. Um, but that expansion, <laughs> when the Guardian crashes the funeral, that was pretty cool. Um, I really liked how, like, maybe maybe we can take some of that stuff and, and add it in to, to a proper release or, or a proper, uh, like, raid experience based on what we're used to now. Um, but then again, like, maybe just make it one-to-one. But, uh... Up, update the mechanics on those encounters. Yeah. So maybe not one to one, hundred percent, but maybe it doesn't need anything extra. It just needs uh, revamping. Yeah. Did basically, it. what um, I found the actual uh, transcript for the mission. Nice. It's called. It's the last rites mission, and basically, uh, Eris says it's not a funeral. It's a death ceremony. Crota's essence is being prepared for the next realm. Whatever that means. <laughs> Yeah. It didn't sound good. It didn't sound... Yeah. Grota was going to go conquer, like, hell or something. You just... It's just doom music, and it's just Crota conquering whatever I plane would... of existence, and then he just pops out all super buff and, like, spiky and, like, more edgelordy, and it's just doom music. I'm not going to lie. I would play that. I would play that game. Or like Crota through the time gate. You just you just have to oh, fight yeah. your way through Oblivion. That would be a fun. Maybe maybe that could be like a uh, like a bonus mission someday. You like reliving memories of the past or like someone else's memories or something. Like I I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they would do it in their narrative because their narrative is it's so. It, it, I, I'm sure they're this like the in universe Bible that Bungie has. For their writers, I'm sure that thing is fucking thick. So <laughs> it's hard for me to like accurately suggest like how you could implement it, but that'd just be cool. <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, I would dig that. I, I yeah, Crota Crota is definitely a cool character who I think became so. The way he's presented in the raid is such like a power block, power gap. Um, or what's what's the word like a power barrier type thing? Like like that that's the difficulty. Yeah. Um, that like especially when you go back later when they when they updated like loot you could get or, or stuff like that like it was just like eh, he's, he's kind of a punk beat him with his own sword. That is kind of funny. <laughs> just take his weapon and thwack him with it. Ugh. So yeah, that that was cool. I wanted I think I think my favorite expansion in D1 was definitely uh Prison of Elders though. Um uh, just when you see Mara uh all of all of uh all of her Elixir guard rebelling and like I don't know. I I thought Skolas was a very well written character. Very like bravo to to the uh, the people who worked on that cuz like I thought I thought he was fleshed out very well and I was very sad when he didn't get a raid like proper cuz I thought he was a a very like well well written well written villain because honestly at the end of the day he's not even that bad a guy in the context of things in the like I I I think we read later that he actually was kind of a bad guy but like hear me out here um he pretty successfully united the elixir and i mean i feel like everything all elixir characters have done like after that is like varying degrees of success on what was essentially skolas's plan so even if he like lost in particular like it, he's really he's really the most successful villain i still say to this day because like what are the elixir doing now and we're even supporting them in doing it exactly what the fuck he was doing exactly now, varying degrees, obviously, like how Slide is not trying to, to murder us, but <laughs> and steal the great machine. But you know how Salvation was. That wasn't that long ago. And now they're trying to work together. Like what the what the shit is that? Yes. It's wild. It's wild. Wild and crazy stuff. But uh Yeah. That was you know, Skolas, I, I got my little beanie. Still, like right over here behind me, he'll he'll always have that special place in, in my destiny heart of just like, yeah, dude, you were <laughs> you were you were too good for this world. <laughs> just didn't get enough, didn't get enough time to shine. Uh, but yeah, that obviously, King's Fall, King's Fall, um, Destiny being really my first. FPS that I played. Uh, I, I I tried others before, guys, but like you know, I my my older brother and his friends used to use me as a like a seat warmer. Um, they were all getting up on me, so I I never had a chance to get too too good uh, from the discouragement. But uh, this was like the first one I really like picked up and like wouldn't put down again. Um, and but I was still pretty pretty grabby, but. Like platformers, like and you pre- might, may remember me telling this story before, but like platformers, like all that other stuff. Oh man, I I I I I, I know how to do some jumping. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> and that was that raid will I will always remember is I was like the only one who had an easy time being the spark runner because in in that iteration you could choose who would get the spark first. Um. And yeah, that was that was like the only time I probably did that raid the most just because that was like one of the only times where it was like, oh, yeah, Taylor, you're coming, right? We need a spark runner. Yeah. OK, guys. I'll <laughs> Puts down juice box. Like, <laughs> I think I could help. out. <laughs> so that'll always have a special place, special place in my heart. Um, but yeah, you know, I think I think uh, on the whole uh D1 will have a lot of great memories from like friends I made and uh, interactions with the story. But uh, I think it will ultimately like all of my memories of it will be through rose colored glasses, especially as content comes back, comes to D2. 
uh, gets gets brought forward and uh, you know remade for this engine, this uh, this environment. Um, because like I, <laughs> I was doing King's Fall the other day with uh, some people who it was their first time, and I was just like I can't, I realized at some point I was just like yeah, this is way easier being able to mantle. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like one, like doing the opening jumping puzzle uh-huh. with the doom ships and everything, having mantle. I'm like, wow, this is actually not that hard. Who would have thought? Like, this is not so bad. <laughs> this is. I'm actually having a pretty good time. <laughs> like, <laughs> even the, uh, the uh, the dick wall. I don't know if there's a better name for that. The piston wall, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know if there's a PG name. Even that wall, though, just like being able to mantle and and all that stuff, it's it's just, I don't know, man. Like it's it's just way easier to to navigate. I think I feel like because especially especially taking the shortcut once you get the chest. Um, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> but. I mean, I guess the shortcuts was easier in D1 just because you could have... Or as a hunter, you could have bones on. Oh, yeah. I know. How about... How about, uh, how about you? What do, what do you think? Because, like, at this point, I don't know if I'd go back to D1 unless someone was doing, like, an SRL league. Yeah. Like, a, like Anna Bray or something like that. Like, so... And that's just really just doing SRL, which, might, which could be its own game. Um... It's it's so different from everything else, but uh, I don't know. What what do you think your uh, your thoughts looking back? Uh, yeah. Um. D1, what do you got? I don't know. I f- I feel like more and more, Destiny Two is like better. Mm-hmm. Like it has more quality of life stuff. It has a lot more content. The only thing I will say that Destiny One has over Destiny Two is that Age of Triumph armor. From that the raids, mm-hmm. that's pre- that's pretty that's pretty snazzy. That's it. That's the only thing. And the, uh, I don't think I don't think anyone will ever, will ever uh, at least oh, like and, and the, uh, Iron Banner uh, armor with the wolf head. Oh yeah. Yeah, true, 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 true. Mm-hmm. The Iron Banner armor from D one was pretty cool. You got me there. And you know, honorable mention to the SRL armor. I just I liked all the uh, the class items in that one, had that like Tron effect. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they would trail if you if you got on your sparrow. So like yeah, that was that was always one of my favorites. Ah. Uh, hey, you want to do SRL later? <laughs> oh <laughs> just, no. Just load up D one on our Xboxes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> uh but yeah, that was definitely the one that started all got me got me into the lore. I remember when I finally sat down and read all the grimoire and it was just like mind blowing and all that. Uh so coming into D two was awesome. Uh I will say, you know, I really like where D two is right now, but do you remember that do you remember that how it was when it first came out? Oh yeah, no, it's definitely changed since it first came out. It was it was always a different game. Oh yeah, definitely better now than it was. Mm-hmm. For anyone who doesn't remember, uh, when D two first came out, there were no random rolls anymore. Um, and it was double primaries. Mm-hmm. Well, that became the meta. There was a there were there were secondaries, but. Mm-hmm. No, there weren't. <laughs> no, you shotgun. Have... Nope. Shotguns, fusions, sniper rifles were all heavies. Right, and sidearms became primaries. Yeah, it was it was really weird. It was weird, it was weird, it was weird. But, like I said, I think it's yeah. better now. Actually, that's a good point. Well, I had I had spent that summer um, playing a fucking lot of Titanfall 2. So coming from that to, like, it was also a lot slower. Um, yeah. I felt like, <laughs> it's weird to say this, I felt like my character had weights on, like my dude. Um, They're getting strong. Yeah, well, it it was like, it was like you were in the Titan, in Titanfall, just being your regular character, like with like how like lumbering it was to kind of move around. Except you could jump instead of like power slide. It's kind of the best way I can think to uh, to describe it. Um, 
Ugh. But uh, glad, glad that's over. But that was kind of an interesting time, too. Um, it was, like, lore-wise? Oh, my God. Introduction to Callus. Oh, yeah. True, true. Callus was cool. Dude. He was so mysterious. He just kind of, like, he just, like, rolled in after the Red War. And was like, hey. Hey, I see you're pretty good at kicking ass. Yeah, I didn't like that guy either. You want to come on my ship? <laughs> just like, oh. Uh, kinda. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a pretty opulent place you got here. And, uh, oh yeah, like the aesthetic. We hadn't seen anything like that. Like uh, it, everything had just been so like kind of run down. Or like aside from the Vex, you didn't really see anything that had that like sleek futurism. Or sure. uh, you didn't see a lot of it. You would see it in some places, especially if you got glimpses of the past. But like. Callus gave in, like, literally everything is gold-plated. Literally everything is gold-plated. Coming in like a Persian emperor, just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, this, uh, and that, uh, you know, I guess, yeah, that was just last season, wasn't it? Um, that was, I, I think his character arc was so, so great. So, like, in the background, kind of like uh, one of the more um, subtle which is ironic given how like boisterous and, and loud his character is. It was one of the most subtle like moves to power. Uh and that and that's saying something, I think, when you're hanging with the likes of Sabathoon. But uh Sabathoon's one of those things that has Yeah, she's gonna trick you, yeah, she's gonna be sneaky, but you also know she's gonna do that. You expect that out of her, so she has to like disguise herself or trick you in some other way. Callus can be himself and you just think he's dumb. You're just like, you're whack. <laughs> yeah. And then you turn around and he's like, got all the power in the rebuilding's body. Like, wait, wait, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Uh, underestimated. Underestimated. That's why, that's why I think it stings the most. <laughs> um, and yeah, of course, can't talk about the red, uh, the Red War without moving, I guess, into Forsaken right after that, because sad times. Your Destiny one, you had a year of, uh, you got to meet Osiris finally. That was pretty cool. You got to, the, the expansions were, the, it, yeah, the, that was before the, um, the sort of seasonal content and the expansions were like, they, they weren't like what you had in D1. Put it that way. They were different. A lot of people didn't like change. Um, and they were like short little short little things that came out every like few months. And it wasn't bad. It just a lot of people wanted more. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And I just I a lot of people hated that one, but I, I being the lore guy, like getting to go to Mercury and getting to meet Osiris. That was so cool. And then getting her to rescue Saint with him later, like, so cool. Yeah. Because uh, at that point, we'd only, like, read about him. We'd only, like, heard about, like, the silly stuff he's doing uh, out there. Um, and similarly with Saint, like, you... You only heard about him in, like, almost, like, songs, almost, that, uh, that the story would tell you, like, uh, these... Uh, just like saying, like, oh, yeah, he headbutted that dude to death. Like, oh, yeah, he dove into the Vex network because the uh, the speaker told him to. He had, like, a weird relationship with the speaker also. Like, ugh. Yeah. Which I want the... Uh, that part of me wishes, like, the speaker or some facsimile was still around, too, because I want that resolved. Like, how does he seem to have, like, one, no problem that there's not another speaker, and two, that, like, the the, the mask is just, like, on display like a trophy? Like he called him father, um, but yeah. How about how about you? What 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 are your thoughts? Uh, how did you like that era? Um, I think I think there were some strong points, especially from the story. Like the the D two campaign was so much better than D one. Uh, the Red War so much better than the than the than the story in D one. Story in D D one was kind of like one off adventures almost, which is great in its own way. But this really started making it like a continuous uh, universe for me. So like what. What were you thinking, Lucy? Uh, yeah, I definitely think the story from D2 to D1 has 
substantially greatly improved, I think. And uh, I definitely like it a lot more than what we had in D1. So. Yeah, when I was when I was playing back then, I had uh, it's funny enough. It's the clan I'm back with now um, that I ended up uh, rejoining, re revisiting um, after uh, after some other stuff. But um, it's it was really cool. Like we had been, like I, I don't know how it was it wasn't it for you in your circle, but it was like we had spent the whole summer like getting hype. Yeah. Uh, for Destiny 2 and like all the changes that came with it and I gotta be honest like I think that was that was back when stuff would like release early in the morning for the US right I think so I think I remember staying up like all night <laughs> like <laughs> waiting the preload just like trying to play trying to get in like, stay stay waiting and of course like servers crash and you end up yeah it's uh it's always fun gosh I uh, Ah, oh, that was that was a fun time. And then, of course, the Leviathan and the little the little raids that came with that coming in after were a lot of fun. Just kicking all these people off of Gallus' ship um, as they tried to uh, to take the Leviathan. I guess once they realized like what it's capable of. Um, and yeah, and then let me see here. So th- from there, we moved into Forsaken. I'll, I'll let you start on Forsaken, Lucy, but, like, for me, that's when, that's when, like, the tone really changed. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I definitely, I remember, because, uh, I didn't really like Cade's characterization in the Red War. He was kind of, to me, it felt like a off-brand Deadpool. hmm But, I think Forsaken kind of, it hurt. A lot of people. People were sad. People were mad. People were like, Aldrin, Aldrin killed Cade. We got to kick his butt. We got to beat him up. Some people were like, like, I remember watching the trailer when, like, the first, like, teaser trailer where it showed Cade all beat up and then Aldrin pulling the trigger. And at first, I remember my, my, uh, my dad told me, have you seen this? And I was like, nah, bro, that, I was like, that's fake. That's not real. And then I watch it and I see it like it's a from Bungie and I was like, oh, what the heck is this? When when this drop? What the hell? And I watched it and I was like, oh, damn, shit, shit just got real. I don't know. I think I think it was uh, I, I think it was necessary. We needed a gut punch. Mm-hmm. I agree Personally, that. because I mean, yeah, we, we got our ass kicked in the Red War and then we kind of were on the up and up again. But pretty much in our, from like the Guardian's perspective, we hadn't really lost, like personal loss. Like, yeah, the, okay, yeah, the Red War was bad, but it's not like anyone we knew died. I mean, yeah, the speaker, but the speaker doesn't really count. We didn't really like, he wasn't like our homie, our friend. A lot of people didn't trust him too. Yeah. Exactly. So like... Cade dying is a lot more personal, because, like, he was our homie, he was our pal, like, you know, we helped him do stuff, we helped him mm-hmm. do stuff in the, the Taken King and the Red War, so, like, he trusted us, and then he dies, and it's sad. I think it was necessary, though, 100%. I agree with that. And then we get the super cool, like, post campaign dreaming city mm-hmm. dreaming city is still by far my favorite destination of all time forever so like the curse and last wish which is a pretty good raid i like that raid it was fun we also got the uh where spider was i can't like i want to say the tangle chore tangle chore that's what it is i wanted to i wanted to say the web but i was like that's too on the nose taylor sorry didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> But yeah, no, basically, I don't know, I like, Forsaken was one of my favorite expansions. I liked it. I like this. I like the story that it brought. Um, and we also got new supers, the middle mm-hmm. tree. And I loved the, uh, 
the missile titan oh that was funny i was like bro we just become human missiles that's great i really <laughs> liked those i liked the healing well for warlock i know it was a little broken and they've toned it down since then but mm, yeah i remember i remember that the uh the well because that was that was something that i think warlocks really needed though because they're they're i their class I, identity was yeah yeah it was it was a little weird at that point but they had also like since d2 they had lost their ability to like self res because like i think in a lot of cases especially in uh like trials pvp like that like warlocks are kind of like built themselves like a little identity of being able to do like a lot more stuff by themselves. Um, and I think even still they're like this, the, they're like one of the, one of the more popular classes, uh, in, uh, in game. But, uh, yeah, I, it, it yeah, they just, just kind of what you said. I, they, they, they really needed it. They needed something in that. Yeah, I think sure. put them back on track. But yeah, uh, I always thought that was cool. I, I definitely like what we have now, the f aspects and fragments and stuff. I think that's so much more customizable. Mm. I mean, yes, we did have to lose stuff, but I think it, yeah, we lost stuff. Well, it doesn't mean we can't, like, the fact that it's now this modular aspect and fragment, it means in the future Bungie could add new stuff if they want. It's mm. easier to add new stuff is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh wow! But we didn't even talk about Wrath of the Machine. That just reminded me. Wrath of the Machine is cringe, and no one cares. There we go. <laughs> we talked about it. I I don't like Wrath of the Machine. I've never I I Rise of Iron is my least favorite expansion from really? Destiny. I I no, I hated it. Okay. I thought the, I thought the story was poo poo. I hate Siva. I think Siva's boring and cringe. <laughs> No, whenever I hear people like, oh, Siva's going to come back. I'm like, here we go again. That story is done. <laughs> the story of Siva is done. We blew up what makes Siva. They ca there cannot be any more Siva. Yes, I know, technically speaking, they're on Exodus ships, but... See, I don't know. You see how far those made it. <laughs> you see, exactly. They've all either been blown up, crash-landed on Nessus, or in another dimension. Who knows where. Like... I don't know. I just personally, I just don't understand what all the hype is about Siva. I don't get it. It doesn't... All I look at Siva and I just think of red licorice. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just I, like Siva. Ooh. Ah, I much like, wow. I feel like a lot of the allure is... Uh, I think I think a lot of, of, of the same things that make uh, Clovis Bray kind of like a... Uh, uh, a strong a strong player in a lot of people's minds is this... It's this uh, dark side of humanity... Yeah, that's true. That's true. You got the, you, you got me there. Yeah. I don't know. I just wish like, I don't know. I just for me, I guess my big annoyance with Siva is that everyone keeps asking for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you guys, for, to me, I think the, the story is done. Like it, it's done. Mm. But I, I feel like the story is done. Like they, it. To me, at least, I don't. I don't really see like. Okay, Siva comes back. We deal with it. The end. That's it. That's basically and all Siva. <laughs> that, like, like, I feel like Siva and the Vex have a very similar problem. The Vex, mm. we basically are like, oh, we, they're tr they're doing something to try and understand paracausality. Okay, we stop that. All right. That they're, they're. That's it. Good job. That's it. Good job. We did it. Good job, that's guys. it. And then, like, Siva, same thing. Oh, no, Siva's back. Okay, we blow up what's making the Siva. We kill the people using the Siva. Okay, done. Like, and we're good. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. I just don't really understand the appeal of Siva at all. I just don't get it. Guys, guys. What to me, personally. Someone, <laughs> someone explain to me, please. I don't understand. I just look at it, and I'm like, okay. It's, it's, it's red. Licorice. You arrested development? No. Okay, there's there's at one point the dad, uh the, the son George Michael is uh gets a girlfriend. And every every time he's like he's like, Yeah, I'm super excited, like blah 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 and it's just like there's nothing wrong with her, but it's just this very like blah sort of sort of human and every time his dad's just like 
really? Her? <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I, I'm not doing the, del- the the delivery justice, but that that seems to that is so what I'm hearing whenever you're like, really, Siva? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, with that take, because I kind of, I kind of, I kind of see your point. And uh, the one thing I think that will always kind of hurt Siva in being a real threat at this point, at this stage of the game, is it's causal. Yeah, that's another thing. Is like all of the stakes are just getting higher and higher and higher. Like we have, you know, Savathun wielding the light, paracausal. We have Aramis wielding stasis, paracausal. We have, you know. Mm-hmm. The witness, and Rolk, and all of that. That's all like big, like universe-wide threat. And I'm just like, see, Siva just kind of seems like you know, smaller. I guess. Yeah. In comparison. Yeah, it's it's like I'm gonna take these things and build it into other things. Yeah, that's cute. That's cute. Uh, you see this 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 big, big guy over here. Yeah, we we need to deal with him, not this. Sorry. <laughs> like he, he can make things that don't exist. I'm not sure you can. I'm using, not sure how you can beat that. Yeah, yeah. Using our causal periodic table, I'm not sure what you're gonna rearrange to kick his ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> which that's a little unfair. They did they did kill guardians uh, with it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at too. Like, Siva seems like it could be really useful. I don't mind it coming back as a tool we use, but I don't. I also don't really see like. I think agreeing with you, like I, I'm not too sure. There's like a lot of like story left. Yeah, I feel bad because like uh, I feel like the Vex have kind of. Uh, They've fallen off. Done. done anything yeah, we have time. like. When was the last last like actual Vex themed? Expand. I mean, it was season of Splicer, maybe you could count that because you know nah. we went to the. Wasn't I mean, really there good. was like, I wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't really them. I mean, we went into the Vex Lo-Fi. That was pretty sweet. Space, which was pretty cool. I still think there should be like a Crucible map or something there. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I mean, but especially, like, especially if we uh, if we ever become. I don't. I, I'm still in the camp. Uh, Corey could come back. I don't think it's going to come back as like in in that sort of like come back as Siva kind of way. But down the line, I totally see something like, yeah, why would you think it's dead in its own simulation? Mm, like, maybe, maybe. It, it controlled all the rules in there. <laughs> like, That's crazy. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it would be like, I think that would be like Savathun just being like, oh yeah, I just got Corey to do it. Yeah, she's not dead. <laughs> like she's, she does yeah. what I tell her. <laughs> That um, would be pretty interesting. I I I was always kind of sad with the uh, season of the Splicer with because uh, mm-hmm. like, everyone knew, or well, it was data mind that Curia was behind everything, and everyone was like, "Yo, that's crazy. That sounds like super hype." And the mission was kind of a letdown, at least from the lore, lore people's mm-hmm. perspective. Like, at least at least give the boss boss health. Not because I had a video of one of my friends. He literally just used a thunder crash and deleted. Curia instantly. Oh, no. And I'm just like, oh. I don't know. Just, just kind of is underwhelming to me. Like, I, like. Yeah. yeah. Especially since Curia had all this build up in the lore of being, mm-hmm. like, you know, a very important chess piece. Yeah, and then it just kind of comes out. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just distracting you while this other yeah, person well, who's being kind of obvious is doing stuff. <laughs> like,. Gotcha. Yeah, it was all just a distraction. But yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I, for sure, yeah. for sure. That one That one was an interesting one. And I really liked what they've done overall with the with the seasonal structure. Like I really enjoyed Season of the Drifter. Oh yeah, Reckoning. Yeah. Oh yeah, that oh, was yeah, a blast Reckoning in the was, past. Was, well, That's, I mean, yeah. Reckoning is really weird because it was definitely built. When we had very overpowered supers, and then they nerfed our supers, and then it was really not fun. Because I remember, because I farmed Reckoning religiously, because this was before Armor 2.0 was a thing, and mm-hmm. you had to, like, get specific perks on your armor 
And I was like, I use, I literally still have the spreadsheet to this day. I'm like, oh, I need this helmet and this, this, these, mo- these stuff on my helmet and this on my gauntlets. <laughs> and all this, like, so I kept doing reckoning over and over and over and over and over. Oh, and man. It was, it was rough. So, so I, I remember, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, when it first came out, it was really fun. I mean, all mm-hmm. things are super, because they're, they're like, ooh, shiny new thing. But, like, Reckoning was, like, I felt like that was kind of, like, where we could just go crazy. And just, like, because I ran Orpheus, and I just pop super after super after super. I'm like, this is fine. This is intended. Yeah, and having, <laughs> and having now, Gambit options was cool, too. Like, that's also one yeah. of like, yeah. yeah, I love, oh, my God, Gambit Prime was so good. I love Gambit Prime. Bungie. Please, I want it back. I just think <laughs> I just like that you could like hard like spec into a role, and if you have a whole team of each person doing their job correctly, it was really fun. Like I would do that with my buddies. Send over the super, the super blocker. Yeah. Oh God, I remember because that is that was right when they took away the shield bros from being blockers. Yeah. Like that, like that was like part of that update. And then they made the super one a gigantic shield bro, which I was just yes. like, okay, this is this is a good reply. <laughs> this is a good. This is yeah. I always thought that was so funny. I thought that was great. But yeah, yeah. I miss. I miss. I liked the. I guess the thing that I liked about Game Five was that you could almost have like a specialization. Mm-hmm. Like you could be a block. You could be a, a a collector. You could be a reaper. You could be a like a a sentry. You could be an like. I just. Mm-hmm. I really liked that. I just, I really liked, I just, I just liked that. I thought that was fun because like, for example, in other games, like the division two or Diablo, there's like, and destiny's kind of done a little bit with the seasonal armor sets, how you have like those seasonal perks. So if you wear more of the armor set, it's a bonus. Mm-hmm. Division has something similar where like, you know, uh, yeah. you're, weapon or like you know you wear one piece of armor set you get a little bonus you wear two you get more literally exactly like gambit prime armor was basically what it is i just i feel like destiny could take that system and do something with it because i think it's very i mean the extra materials and stuff is nice but Mm -hmm. i think it could go further in my opinion but extra specialization so yeah, I need like more vault space. <laughs> no, you can't do one that gives you more vault space. It's a little that'd be a bit. Oh, that and then be, everyone, would, everyone would just every, wear that armor. Everyone would just do that. I think I would be like you know like strike armor that gives you like more. I don't know. Not even necessarily strike armor, but like you know, kind. I guess kind of raid mods kind of fill that space. Now that I think about it, like raid mods mm-hmm. for raid armor, but there's no like gambit mods for gambit. It was like, oh, in Gambit, this stuff happens, or in Crucible, this stuff happens, or in PVE yeah, I, I comp. Think, I think they found. I think I think Bungie found themselves in a in a weird position. Yeah, because I don't know. people people like people wanted random roles, and then random roles became hard to get, and then it's just like, well, I don't want to grind to get this armor. I already have a good armor. Why can't I use this armor? And it's just kind of like, well, uh. <laughs> yeah, definitely, 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 yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. A tough spot to be in. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was an interesting time. I really like. I th- I think the best one, and I've enjoyed a lot of them. So don't make don't make. Please don't think that uh, that anything is uh, is poor because of that. But uh, I think my favorite season in the new structure is still the first one, though Undying. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. There was hype for about like. 13 weeks each week about what the fuck was going to happen. True. You have to admit that that was our first like introduction to the seasonal model like that. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why there was a lot more. Now that we like kind of know the gist of it, it's kind of more like, yeah, well, same, like a lot like same structure. Basically, Mm -hmm. you know, we have intro, it ramps up and then you have a cat, well, not a cat, uh, catalyst like a climax yeah and then you have a falling action like and round then, up yeah but it's a very short like little st- to the point story i think i think undying for me i for me undying is i mean like i was very hype with it as well but 
Yeah. And and I think um you know, kinda to your point your point, it was our first taste, but it was also Bungie's first deployment mm-hmm. of of that type of thing, uh, in Destiny Two. Um and I think that's important because I, I think what we did was we got a taste of like in everything that could happen in in a season in one season. Yeah. Big event. True. Like new activity. Like, oh shit. <laughs> like like as you as you work through the story, like high stakes. Like what the fuck are we building? OSHA. Like there was there was just a lot that came with it. And I, I, I think there's been a lot of great things from that that have been recreated in subsequent uh, seasons. And there have been a lot of seasons that I've, I've absolutely loved. Last season, great example. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that one's still going to be the gold standard. Uh, kind of like how, how Vogue said it, you know, when it first yeah. came out just kind of set that gold standard. And I realize, you know, everything's always going to go back to, I guess the first one when you taste something like that, like I said, if they made a new game, obviously it's going to be different, but like when you have, when you have a new way to experience an old thing that you love, like an old IP, that's that you're always going to go back to that first like game changer and judge it by that. Like I you've seen it, you see it happen all the time. You see it happen in wow. People will still talk about like those early expansions. Those early expansions could literally be like black polygons. True. And people would be like, that was the shit. <laughs> black polygons that you can't click on <laughs> and tell it what to do. People be like, you guys <laughs> just don't know what it was like back then. And, and I mean, yeah, it's it's all about uh, it's all about time and place and uh, and putting it together. Um, when I think about Destiny Two raids, and this is this will this will include the reprises because I think I think at that point they're like Destiny Two raids. Um, you know, I think my favorite one is probably Deepstone Crypt. Mechanics wise, it's it's a lot of fun um, and it's very accessible. It's not I'm not going to say it's the most difficult or maybe even like the most fun mechanically raid because I, th- I think sometimes the mechanic difficulty can add something. Um, but lore wise. At least like my circles of the community, we've been talking about the Deep Stone Crypt and what that meant and how exos worked. Just for a very long time. And in a very fun and, like I said, accessible way, this expanded and explained a lot of the Destiny world. Yeah, for sure, for sure. In in a way that I think you know, King's Fall, King's Fall does does a very like similar similar thing in like widening your view. But I think I think for me, uh, Deepstone Crypt was just a little more personal, just because Exos are like guardians, like these these are people you can actually play as. Yeah, I think True. I think that one's my favorite. Um, but I've 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 enjoyed I've enjoyed most of them. I didn't I did not like uh, the sorry bear. You didn't like uh, crown of frown. I did not crown of sorrow. I did not. I like that. Right? I like <laughs> the beginning. I will say the the intro. I don't like. I guess my uh, my issue with crown of sorrow is that. The in, the very first encounter, there's nothing you can do to make you go faster. Mm-hmm. I think that's what a lot of people are annoyed with. Or, well, annoyed with in general. Is I hate when there's encounters where you... Nothing you do can make it go faster. It just... Happens. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's, like it's outside of your control, right? Yes. The game is just playing. I think... I think with that, though... Um, just some of, like, like I said, like that was one of my favorite things to uh, to cover here on the show, and actually, yeah, let's let's share some memories. We haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, we did get we did get one from um, where are we here? From uh, at Abdi Johan. Uh, go, go check them out. They're on uh, you know, Twitch and uh, they stream and they do some Star Citizen illustration. They're cool, but they're also a fan of the show. Um, 
their their favorite they added us their favorite was uh the witch queen expansions and our yeah. like reactions going through like that season two dude totally yeah, was really... yeah i agree too that was probably one of my favorite yeah that's another one like it i understand and you know this is not a knock against that DLC at all, like that expansion at all. Savathun's another one I hope we get to fight in a raid though someday. But what if she becomes a friend? I just want to be friends with the Hive. I want to be friends. What if we can have friendly Hive but not Savathun? Okay. I'm convinced. <laughs> You'll sign that dotted line? <laughs> sure. Sign up. Yeah. I think I think we can do it, especially as some of these light bearing hive who, you know, don't have their memories back are uh, like hesitant to uh, kill guardians and give them permadeath. I think there's definitely definitely an opportunity there. If we could do it if we could do it with the Elixir, we could we could do it with the hive. Maybe they'll be like, actually call us the Krill now. We're gonna go be space scr- scrimps again. <laughs> That'd be funny. We just wanna hang out. <laughs> <laughs> oh that is interesting though what, what's funny I, I will say about that is and i don't know if it gets talked about enough um but savathun really proved ulantan right yep once she balanced it with with her house with with the loosened hive with her house their worms stopped being hungry they, she basically like beat the contract even without getting out of getting out of it you know what i mean yeah. Uh, but even that was like a finite fix. And she knew it. You know, also a very successful Destiny villain. Uh, she is one of my favorites, so. God, that was so fun, though. Like, all the buildup into how she would do it and the discovery in the season before that, or the reveal. Like, we had all suspected. I think there had been a lot of strong hints to it. And, you know, a lot of us probably, like, air quotes, knew. But uh, the reveal when she was Osiris. And uh, the reveal that, like, she'd had him captive for that long. Since, for, like, a few seasons at that point, maybe, like, almost a year. It was, it was really cool. It, that was just a great, uh, great build up a plot, great execution. And um, it just, it that's another one, like, it tied up so many, it explained so many things that we had just had questions about from the lore community that like we couldn't quite piece together on our own. Like one, like how the worms worked exactly. Like we, we learned that the worms are fucking sentient. We have a worm in a gun that we can talk to. Yes. And they make fun of us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish it, did, that one doesn't have like random dialogue when you're using him, right? Uh, you can, if you're running wellspring and you have the gun. That's cool. Yeah. Like, and I just if you to have say, the like, gun, and if you have the gun and you do the preservation mission, he'll talk to. That's, yeah, that's what it is. It's just his two instances. I really, I really want him to just like make little comments. Like maybe if you kill a hive, he'll say something. Yeah, I'll be like, like "Why oh. you do that?" <laughs> that was my homie. Mm-hmm. No. I knew that. I knew that worm. <laughs> I knew that. We were friends. Uh. I think that's why. Yeah, that the the that'll that was a really big reveal too. That was that was that one I think had more build up than any other any other expansion Destiny's had. So like that was that was just a magical a magical time to be to be spin foiling and I, I'm really glad we were here for it. Yeah. Um how about you, Lucy? Favorite any favorite memories, any favorite uh, spin foils? Mm. I was gonna say the uh the the witch queen one. That was pretty fun. I liked doing that with our reactions and stuff. I did. That was that was a lot of fun. Gotta say that was one of my favorites too. I really liked when you and I went back and uh I think it was after maybe the uh, the red keep or something. Uh Scarlet uh, uh Scarlet, Scarlet Keep. keep. Yeah, but it was like it was after that, but it was like something from there had been resurfaced. But you remember when we went back into like the history of the moon, or maybe it was, 
It was just with yeah, the it sunlight. Was the, yeah. It was the moon. Yeah. History of the Moon Part Two <laughs> was pretty, or Part One, Part Two. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorites. I think just the the whole the whole mystery about like how all this shit is in the moon, <laughs> which they, some of that's been answered now. Actually, we we uh, we could say that there's no doubt the uh, the the Hive ship, Nezarak ship, crashed. It cut its way into the moon. It did not form. Yeah, unfortunate. Wah wah wah. Yeah. Fury debunked. I know. I know. But I'll still I'll still I'll still I'll still follow my sword. If that had been a war moon to start with, uh that crashed, like I I'm just saying that would have been cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I may I may have like audibly squeed if that if that had happened. So definitely check that out if you if you missed that episode. That was that was a fun one. Um uh, and I think, I think, honestly, like when we went into um, the one dungeon, the uh, the 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 one eyed Willy one, the the one eyed Pete duality. No, 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 no. the uh, the pirate one, with um, the treasure, grasp avarice. of avarice, grasp yeah. of avarice. I, I I really like I I've liked all our dungeon ones, but I really enjoy grasp. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. I I really enjoyed investigating that that uh, particular dungeon just because it had this perfect mix of like nostalgia, like Goonies and and, and all that all that other stuff, but with uh, just really cool, really cool nods to uh, yeah, to their, for sure. To World of Destiny. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Oh, and then we had. Um, you know, I just I just want to say to everyone who's written in and you know added us and said goodbye and ever you know all the all the guests we've had over the the couple of years. Um, thank you. I don't know if when we we started out doing this, we could really picture doing it as long as we have without you. So we just want to say thank you so much for sticking with us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We honestly, we love you guys. Uh, we hope, we hope you continue to take care of yourself. Um, uh, no matter what, and we'll always be rooting for you. Just wanted to say thank you real quick. Um, let's see. You got, I think it's, I think it's that time you got, you got any shout outs? Oh man. Shout out. Uh, yeah. Any final shout out, thoughts? Uh, shout out to our listeners for being the best and yeah. listening to us ramble on about <laughs> destiny and stuff. And uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, same. I want to give a shout out to my my co host and uh, show partner. Aww. Lucy, um, yeah, uh, I couldn't have done it without you, um, and I'm so so excited uh, that that I you know I I made I made a really great friend, guys. I made a really great friend doing this show. Her name is Lucy. Her name is Caitlin. Sup? <laughs> um, That's me. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it wouldn't trade it for anything this is this has been a lot of fun and it wouldn't have been the same with anyone else so yeah thank you thank you Aww. for being my buddy my buddy my buddy to talk about this stuff yeah with. um but actually that that kind of that kind of reminds me i i want to give you guys maybe we'll release a little a little teaser on this on this uh this channel once we finally get some some last some last some uh some things nailed down but uh you know, this won't be the last time you hear from us. Ooh. We'll be talking about some stuff on the horizon um, that I think, I hope, will give you the same vein and joy and uh, interest that uh, that this show did. Um, like we said, it's all for great reasons. Uh, mm-hmm. But we got to we gotta kind of ship topics. And we... we we talked it out and we just agreed that, uh, you know, uh, closing one chapter and opening another was the, was the right way to go about that. So 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, remember to take care of yourself. Drink water. It's so important. Yeah. It's so important to be hydrated. There's so many things that, that especially as you get old like me, and I'm, I imagine we have some like older guys that like, Taylor, you're not that old. I, I'm, old I'm old. I'm old enough to learn. <laughs> that hydration just like achy joints. Like, why aren't you drinking more water? <laughs> like, you're tired all the time. You should hydrate. <laughs> like, it's it's amazing. Uh, but uh, that's all part of taking care of yourself. Uh, you have value. You are yes. worth your own time and attention. You deserve Take care of yourself. Yeah, you deserve it. Um, yeah. But with that, everyone, one last time from the Spin Foil Theory podcast. Goodbye. Doodles. That's off, Guardians. That's it for this week's discussion. Have any questions or comments about this episode? You can reach out to us on Twitter, at Spinfoil Theory, or write us an email at spinfoiltheory at gmail.com. If you'd like to read our show notes, check out articles, listen to past episodes, and more, be sure to pay us a visit over at our website, spinfoiltheory.com. The Lord Network.